CRISPR these days refers to the suite of technologies that can edit the DNA of living cells by adding, removing or changing segments of it. Cancer, by definition, is a genetic disease caused by DNA mutations, changes within the sequences of DNA. So can we cure cancer with CRISPR? That is the hope of many researchers, but a current promising solution that we'll take a look at in this video is perhaps not the straightforward solution you are thinking of. Let's investigate. Cancer is a disease that occurs when some cells in the body start to grow out of control and invade other tissues or organs. Cancer is caused by changes in the DNA of these cells, which can be inherited or acquired during one's lifetime. So if we have a tool like CRISPR, surely it would just make sense to use it and fix the DNA changes. Well, while this could be a possibility for some cancers, for many, well, it's not that simple. Cancer is a complex and multifaceted disease. There are different types of cancers caused by different mutations with resistance to different drugs and therapies, and cancers themselves are very heterogeneous with different cancer cells having different mutational profiles. So for sure, you could take a cell from a tumour, sequence its DNA, try to find the mutations, and then develop a CRISPR that could edit all of these mutations. But that's not a quick, nor simple, nor cheap, nor necessarily even effective strategy. And even if you wanted to create some therapy, the tumour might have mutated further within that time period, and the patient would only further suffer. Plus, no new drug can go straight to a patient, it has to be tested first in clinical trials. So you would have to give the same therapy to everyone, but not everyone has the same tumour. A lot of these tumours have variations. So in other words, for sure there is still some hope here, but it's not really a feasible approach. But why try and revert the cell that's b become mutated back to being non-mutated? Why don't we just kill the cancer cell? Can we use CRISPR for that? Well, yes, we could. But before we get to that, we need to consider how our bodies typically respond to cancerous cells. You see, cancer cells are mutated versions of normal cells. So typically, this involves the presence of mutated proteins found within cells. Our immune system is positioned to detect foreign cells, which while typically means infected cells, can also mean cancer cells. Instead of viral or bacterial antigens being recognised by a subset of the immune cells called T-cells, cancer antigens can instead be recognised, these antigens being the mutated parts of the normal proteins. As to the T-cells, these mutated parts of the protein look foreign. However, as immune-mediated selection is very potent, as it kills the cell, it would be important for the T-cells not to recognise healthy cells, and so there are biological signalling mechanisms that actually tend to attenuate the T-cell response. In other words, cancer cells can find ways to persist if they evade this immune-mediated clearance through other mutations. So what if we use CRISPR to improve the potency of these immune cells and redirect them towards cancer cells? Well, what an excellent idea. But firstly, let's just recap what CRISPR is. CRISPR and CRISPR-associated proteins are key components of an ancient bacterial adaptive immune system. Following its discovery, it's been repurposed as gene editing technology. In its simplicity, the components include an RNA guiding part that locates a specific region on DNA and the protein component, which has the activity to cut DNA. So the two components, RNA and protein, they go together like Rama Lama Lama Kadinga Kadinga Dinga. Then once they find the region of DNA, there's a snip by Cas9 and boom, double-stranded break. Now this, dare I say it, traditional CRISPR-Cas9 system, where it introduces a break in both strands of DNA, is actually quite hazardous for a cell, with double-stranded breaks being an initial cause of cancer-causing mutations. So researchers have found alternative ways to edit DNA without breaking both DNA strands. One of these methods is called base editing. Base editing doesn't involve the CRISPR protein cutting the DNA itself. It's all about that base, about, about that, that base. base. No, trouble. no trouble indeed, because this time we switch out the base directly by adding an editing enzyme to the Cas9 protein. What we can do with the editing is more limited here, but it's much safer. Okay, so let's just try and recap here. What edits are we actually making if we're not editing the cancer cells directly? Well, this is the clever part. Instead of editing the cancer cells that are heterogeneous, 
The logic is to edit the immune cells and to make them super stealthy and resilient to go and kill the cancer cells directly. These gene edited types of immune cells where they are directed towards cancer cells are called CAR T cells, CAR standing for chimeric antigen receptors. A receptor is added to the T cell so that they can detect the cancer cells, mimicking the way that our body would naturally recognize foreign cells. However, there are additional changes that researchers are investigating to make these CAR cells even better as a therapeutic. Because not that I have a biotech company, but logically speaking, a company when developing a drug needs to prioritize three main things. Firstly, that this drug is effective, that it kills the cancer cells. Secondly, that it does this safely, it doesn't cause some other disease. And thirdly, to try to make it cost effective, hopefully such that it benefits the patient, not just the company's bank wallets. <laughs> so, the way to do this is to also edit the T-cells so that they are resistant to signals that suppress their activity, and that the T-cells themselves are not recognised as foreign by the body. A cost-effective decision would also be to generate allogeneic CAR T-cells, meaning that any patient could get the same supply of T-cells compared to autologous, where the cells would need to be made for each patient. Anyhow, a recent preprint has used base editing and CRISPR to make six gene edits to make CAR T cells. These CAR T cells had improved anti tumor efficacy, leading to improved tumor elimination and survival in humanized mouse models. Here, you can see the tumor volume over time post delivery of the T cells for mice that are injected with human lung cancer cells. So, even though CAR T cells were developed some 25 years ago, we now have the tools to make them supercar T cells. So CRISPR has, and will continue to have, a massive potential for cancer immunotherapy, and it is worth mentioning that CRISPR is being used in general to study cancer biology. We can use CRISPR to create cancer models in different species such as mice, to do large-scale screens to understand the impact of mutations and identify novel therapeutic targets, as well as alternative CRISPR proteins that could be used for early cancer detection and diagnostics. Today, I've only just highlighted one potential avenue that seems promising. So with that, I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.